So yesterday, Donald Trump did exactly what he told us time after time after time after time he was going to do. He pulled the US out of the Iran nuclear accords, something that has been described as perhaps one of the most successful arms control treaties of modern history. He said he did it because we got nothing in the deal. It was a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad deal. Um, in which uh, Iran's stockpile of enriched uranium was reduced by 97%, uh, stops them from enriching any to a point where it could be used to produce uh, nuclear weapons, capped how many nuclear centrifuges they could have and forced them to use only old, slow, outdated centrifuges, stopped them from using one of their facilities that is best suited to potentially producing a nuclear weapon, and has allowed uh, nuclear investigators from the IAEA uh, pretty much constant uh, pervasive surveillance of their activities. Now, did they violate the terms of the deal? No, they did not. International observers say they didn't, even the Trump administration says that they didn't, and yet we have pulled out. So here we are. Joining me now to break down this situation is investigative journalist and documentary filmmaker, Shavala Madlina. Welcome back to the show, Shavala. Hey, John. Thank you for joining us. So. He has done it, we've been talking about it for what seems like years now, the possibility he would pull out of this. Are you at all surprised? Well, no, I mean, this has been set in motion since his campaign promises. And it's, you know, from Netanyahu to Pompeo to Bolton, there's been all of his kind of cast of players doing this kabuki theater over the last few weeks um, for this final staging. Uh, if you saw that press conference that Netanyahu did the other week, which was ridiculous, and also kind of made me realize that Netanyahu has been trumping before Trump was trumping. <laughs> um, he just sounds slightly less like a blithering idiot because he has like this nice baritone voice full of gravitas. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, he puts up slides saying Iran lied and um, kind of adds this kind of hyperbolic, hysterical tone to information that was old. Um, that falsely implied that there was new information that this withdrawal was based upon, um, when it was really all based upon um, an unholy alliance of interests that have been agitating for war and or agitating for re regime change in Iran. Um, and I think some of them are deranged enough to think that it's achievable without um, insane chaotic war. Mm -hmm. I think they're that messianic and delusional. Although some um, of them might well be willing to engage in that sort of war. Yes, I mean, John Bolton is weirdly bloodthirsty and I, I don't know what happened to that man as a child. Um, but he has been agitating for this for a long time. And he also, I mean, a lot of people point to the fact that he has regularly appeared for you know huge fees like fifty thousand dollars here, fifty thousand dollars there, um, at speeches um, put on and galas and events put on by the MEK, which is um, a jihadist, weirdly cultist organization um, that wants regime change in Iran, um, and it's a small group of Iranians that have been in exile since the '80s with very tenuous links to Iran, um, and they've been they they now have access to the white house and that will be the means that that is what john bolton has been repeatedly um putting forward as his means for regime change in iran um i think we're all thinking every, it's it's very easy to say oh it's all about the money the military industrial com complex and um this is also everybody can get paid john bolton has a vision for the middle east as is netanyahu um and it's as much about that as it is about all the kind of ancillary um, bonuses to to war profiteers um, than anything else. It's it's about them installing a regime um, that they feel will be allied and controlled by the U.S. It, it's almost as if they haven't been paying attention to their own track record yeah. for the last like 30 years. And by the way, there's like a double irony to to Netanyahu kind of. You know, setting Trump, you know, he was giving Trump an assist um, with this whole ridiculous uh, press conference um, in that, you know, as far as I know, <laughs> as far as I can remember, um, you know, Israel, it's, Israel actually had a clandestine nuclear program itself and they lied and they actually had the nukes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the, the, there's, it's, it's, we're in a different reality here. They've changed objective truth at this point. Uh, that is the case uh, in foreign policy and elsewhere. Uh, yeah, I personally, the idea of John Bolton being back in the White House sends a shiver up my spine. I thought that we had moved past him 
and that sort of brand or generation of neocons, and now they're back and more successful than ever. Um, now, I, I have heard reports, by the way, that uh, so of course we have Iran and us in the deal, but we're not the only people involved in it. It's a multilateral uh, uh, deal. So um, I believe Haaretz reported that there was some indication out of Iran that they might stay in the uh, accords even without the US's presence. Uh, how likely do you think that is? Well, it is a six person deal and it's it's a strange time for assessing. I really wouldn't place any bets and waste any money trying to figure out how much leverage um, the US has with its strange chaotic game of double bluffing and or just um, going it alone and ham fisted just terrible diplomacy that we are trying to pretend um, and rationalize after the fact is some sort of brinksmanship like we did with Korea. Um, but here's the other thing. I also am not so drawn into the hand wringing about no one will trust us anymore. I have news for everybody. <laughs> no one tr no one has trusted America in international agreements, especially in the Middle East for a very, very, very long time, especially the parties involved mm -hmm. in this. Um, so viewers should understand that you are a Brit. <laughs> You're reporting from the UK right now. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you question my red-blooded Americanness? Um, <laughs> no, but it's it's just true. And Iran lies, Israel lies, America lies. Like, and and to to play this um, ridiculous game of naivete that we're seeing, we've now lost our, our our ability to be a kind of neutral steward um, and shepherd of of international, you know, disarmament agreements is playing with false, outdated. False information and outdated information, um, and possibly mythical information. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that we should abandon the only diplomatic path we have to keep another nuclear power from 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 occurring and proliferating in the Middle East. Um, and I also, you know, it's important to keep other things in perspective. Iran is, you know, today with the with the military strikes that. Um, Israel or the other, you know, was it yesterday the military strike that Israel um, mm. conducted in Syria mm. on an Iranian base? Um, that's been going on for a while. That's true. I remember last time I was in Lebanon, 2015. They had just killed a the son of one of the founding fathers of Hezbollah in Lebanon. Mm. Um, and by the way, that's dragging another. You're dragging another country and <laughs> to that melee. So look, I'm I'm curious about a couple of things. I want your estimation of. How much more likely does this make it that Iran will develop a nuclear weapon in the next, say, five years? And how have the odds shifted in terms of a possible war with Iran? Do you think that we're appreciably more likely to go to war with Iran now? Well, it's important to just remember what this this agreement was supposed to be about. It was supposed it was just one prong of this thing. None of this has actually curbed Iran's influence in the region, um, but neither was the sanctions regime before that. And arguably, we gave them the biggest help by destroying Iraq. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so there's other, there's, while this is going on and while we're removing um, the one diplomatic path to at least um, controlling what happens with the most dangerous and destructive weapons, um, Iran is it plays the long game. They're very smart. Um, the regime is, uh, and while they, you know, they of course have discontent at home and issues with cost of living spiraling out of control. Um, this just this is a big win for them to. They have they have a mandate for war like we won't, um, and it, it exponentially increases the chances that um, there will be, if not, is more Israeli boots on the ground. Um, there's definitely more Iranian boots on the ground. I mean, this has been happening since before we pulled out of this agreement. Um, you, you know, the 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 difference in the last there's been you know Israeli and Iranian skirmishes inside Syria for for a while. Um, the difference is last month, just before we bombed Syria, um, you know Israel did as well, and they actually killed Iranians, not just Lebanese Hezbollah fighters. Mm -hmm. They killed Iranians, and for the first time, Iran acknowledged it. So it's already it's already happening. Um, so it's just important to keep this in perspective. But also at the same time, why would you, if you cared about peace and you cared about mitigating destruction and mitigating um, unraveling chaos in the Middle East, doesn't matter what end of the political spectrum you're on, everybody claims to want these things. Mm -hmm. um, some claim that it's impossible with the current Iranian regime, but I, 
I mean, I live in reality. I, I don't know where Netanyahu lives. Apparently, somewhere with lots of scented candles. Did you see that with his corruption scandal? His wife spent like five thousand dollars on scented candles. Anyway, candles. He, I mean, he, him and his wife are massively corrupt and mm-hmm. re- repugnant in a very political sense. Um, but the plan, the, the the motions were already in place, so it's just important to keep perspective. But it, it I, I say it, it, it multiplies things exponentially. Mm-hmm. Multi- multiplies the likelihood of war between. That is I unfortunate. Mean, yeah. Uh, so I'm curious, uh, what is the experience? Uh, so you're in the UK right now, I believe. Yeah. Uh, so uh, obviously, partner to the deal. Uh, what has the reaction been uh, inside of the UK? I, I did hear that Boris Johnson was attempting to convince Trump uh, not to pull out in the run-up to it. Yeah, I mean Boris Johnson is. I'm going to borrow a line from Veep. He's about as useful as a dildo made of pastry. Um, as a foreign minister, <laughs> he, I mean it's a line from Veep. I'm just quoting Julia Louis Dreyfus. Um, it's a delicious yeah. analogy. Yeah, great. Um, but he was he was tactically smart in that he went on Fox and Friends, which is apparently literally whispering in Donald Trump's ear. It's what Netanyahu did. It's a completely strange reality that, but he, you know, quickly caught up with it. Um, he wants this to go. Everybody in the war, everybody else in the world wants this deal to 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 hold. Um, I don't know how I don't know how the how Bolton um, or Anyone, anybody working for the U.S. within the U.N. or within, you know, at the EU and in Brussels is going to be able to have any leverage with anyone going forward. Yeah. We have completely gutted our, our State Department and our diplomatic, you know, cachet of skilled people and people who can get who can get anything done short of war. It, it, it's our State Department probably looks like an old Sears. Yeah. In like middle America, like it looks like derelict and empty. Um, so I don't. I I think there's a strong chance that um, that the EU will try and forge ahead with some sort of. I, I think the EU might and the European leaders might try and hold this together in some way, shape, or form. I think that might be the way this plays out. Well, I, I guess that would be something. Uh, fingers crossed. Uh, thank you, Shivala, for joining us uh, and lending your uh, insight and experience on this topic. Always good to have you on the show. Okay, thanks, John. Talk to you soon.